Hey everyone, today we're out in the paddock because I wanted to introduce you to this old fella. Uh, this is Chief. We've been friends for a long, long time now and um, the reason I wanted to introduce you to him was because I got a question this week from Alex about, uh, her question was, how do you feel about companies who uh, have well-being programs in place, you know, maybe there's a yoga and mindfulness program, um, and yet there is still this expectation, whether uh, formalized or not, sometimes it's just one of those informal things, that, that the culture expects that you're there working 10 plus hours a day every day and, and pushing yourself and pushing yourself, and that conversation around resilience being, how can you do more? <laughs> That's pretty much my feelings too. So, <laughs> horses are horses are masters of nonverbal communication. And to quote one of my good friends, Andrew Froggett, uh, horses don't care if you're the CEO or the janitor. They're going to treat you the same way. And so, a lot of people, when uh, when they first come into contact with horses, can be pretty terrifying. I mean, they're big animals, right? Chiefy here is probably four to five hundred kilos. A muscle and um, and they're unpredictable so understandably people are really nervous and if you've been fortunate enough to come on one of my retreats then you may have met this old fella uh, but one of the pieces that I love to do is to teach people for that first contact with horses as part of understanding your nonverbal communication because the trick with horses is they're not worried if you're scared what they're worried about is when you don't own your so all of this non-verbal communication that's going on when you work with an animal like this, it is also a lot about how you show up and how you own your feelings and how you take ownership for what's going on within, within all of this. And so then to get back to Alex's question, uh, you know, I, I struggle with companies who um, are putting in place well-being programs and yet at the same time perpetuating a culture of non-healthfulness. Uh, you know, perpetuating a culture where there's an expectation to keep moving and keep working and, and, and driving essentially a system that is, is, is not healthy. To me, workplaces should be healthy. They should be healing places. Uh, for those of you who've read Simon Sinek's new book, and if you haven't, check it out, The Infinite Game, he talks about for as long as we keep perpetuating this idea that we can heal over things with a yoga session or a mindfulness course or a, a once a week well-being catch-up, for as long as we perpetuate the idea that we can do those things to solve the problems and the toxicity that we're seeing in our corporate environments today, for as long as we continue to kid ourselves, then it just takes us longer to get to those things that are actually going to make a difference. And um, for me, much as, as Simon says, uh, it's, it's about the leadership change that needs to happen. So it's, it's not about visibly seeing a couple of token gestures towards we care about health. It's about how you show up as an individual and as a leader and how much congruency you have in demonstrating the behavior yourself uh, and, and opening up space to actually have a healthful environment for your employees. And that's more than simply yoga and mindfulness. That's about building a culture and building an organization that is responsive and adaptive and allows all of people's unique talents to come into play. So uh, Chief and I are going to go for a walk. It's about 30 plus degrees today here in Queenstown. We've had a week of it. Um, I reckon we're going to go for a swim, but if you've got any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. So drop me a link below. Thanks.